What I want to talk about now, beginning a discussion, is an area of the brain. I refer to it often, and whenever you read about the brain as a big focus of attention, as well as research on it, and that is the prefrontal cortex. So it's the front of the brain, and then the prefrontal cortex means the front of the front of the brain. And that's, as I said, it's like the size of your fist, and it's right behind your forehead. And executive functioning is sort of... <laughs> everything good about the brain and what we need as human beings to survive and thrive because it leads to this field called executive functioning. So I'm going to read you the skill sets of the prefrontal cortex of executive functioning. And you can see if that resonates with you or someone in your life, whether they have a lot of it or could develop it. So here are some skill sets that come from the prefrontal cortex functioning in a healthy, integrated way. The first is something called response inhibition. This is the capacity to think before you act. The ability to resist the urge to say or do something, giving one time to evaluate a situation and how one's behavior might impact it. For example, a baseball manager accepting the call of an umpire without an argument, at least before you go running out on the field and kicking up dirt. Second is working memory. This skill set of executive functioning or your prefrontal cortex, this is the ability to hold information in one's memory while performing complex tasks. It incorporates the ability to draw on past learning or experiences to apply to the situation at hand or project into the future. In other words, being able to juggle different tasks, including multi-step directions, and keeping track of different tasks with different deadlines. So that's working memory, and that is prefrontal cortex. Another skill set from this one area of the brain, emotional control. The ability to manage one's emotions to achieve goals, complete tasks, or control and direct behavior. For example, being able to manage well the anxiety associated with taking a test, enabling one to perform to one's potential. So you're anxious, your prefrontal cortex doesn't allow you to get overwhelmed by it. Another skill set, sustained attention. This is the capacity to keep paying attention to a situation or task in spite of distractibility, fatigue, boredom, or obstacles. This is the ability to keep working on a project despite more enjoyable competing opportunities or despite a setback. Another quality is task initiation. This is the ability to begin projects without due procrastination in an efficient or timely manner, not waiting until the last minute or beyond to begin a project. I want to make this point that this executive functioning, the connections, the prefrontal cortex to the rest of the brain begins in infancy to a certain degree in, in the toddler, sort of, but isn't fully developed until they say a woman is 26 and a man is 32. I'm not making that up. That ability to have emotional control, to inhibit your responses, to have good judgment, plan ahead. And I think one of the most important qualities of the research on transcendental meditation is it strengthens the connections between the prefrontal cortex and the rest of the brain. They actually, some people call the prefrontal cortex the CEO of the brain because information comes in through the senses and uh, activates, impacts all different parts of the brain, the temporal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and it gets sent forward to the prefrontal cortex. And in that qu supposed quiet, of this area, decisions are made, plans are, are formulated, and actions are initiated. So those connections are strengthened when we transcend, when we settle down. 
the front of the brain, the connection between the front of the brain and the back of the brain, and even between the left and right hemispheres of the prefrontal cortex. So very fascinating bit of information, and I will complete the discussion of skill sets of the prefrontal cortex and executive functioning tomorrow. I'm going to read the famous Sonnet 18 by William Shakespeare, thought to have been written in the 1590s, but published in 1609. Just because it's beautiful. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's leaf hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed. And every fair from fair sometime declines by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Thank you for joining, and we'll connect again real soon.